All right. Hey, good evening and welcome to Living Spirit Ministries. It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday. And guess what? It is Bible Trivia Day, right? Bible Trivia. So what we're going to do, um, we're, we're going to go and we're going to switch over to Kahoot as is our uh, is our way here. We're going to allow some folks to, to get up in here. We're going to allow, allow this thing to, to go and to percolate. I'm going to go and I'm going to share the screen here in just a second. Okay. And we're going to go into Kahoot, but then we're going to go into some prayer. So I'm going to allow some folks to get in here tonight. We are coming to you live from 951 South McPherson Church Road, Suite 102, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And it's just a pleasure to be here with you tonight. And uh, I'm just glad that you are here with us. You could be any place in the world, but you chose to be with us. And so if you're here with us in the fellowship hall, you're, you're probably looking up at the big screen. So you're, you're able to see the um, you're able to see some of the questions. I understand that if you when we go and we play Kahoot, sometimes on, on, on the phones, you can't always see some of the choices and answers and stuff on there. So we're, we're, we're trying to make this thing so that we don't have folks. We're not going to mention any names that accuse certain people of having advantages. All right. We're all winners here if we're getting the knowledge of God. But uh, some folks, some folks seem to have a little bit better connectivity. Uh, and there we are. So we're, 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 try <laughs> we're trying to uh, we're trying to, to, to have it to where we can get it to where some folks can have equal opportunities here, all right? So if you're in a sanctuary or if you're in, a, in the fellowship hall tonight, then you're able to look up on a big screen and there shouldn't be any issues, um, any issues with us going forth and being able to see, um, and being able to see the complete answers there, right? And so we, we are almost there. We're starting to get it there. Hopefully, it looks like the screen might have frozen up a little bit there. I'm getting it in there. All right, so you'll see me look up periodically there. What you will see beaming up on your screen there is the get ready to join. Now, yes, there it is. And so now you should see the game pin that is going along with it. All right, so that game pin, you will go, and if you want to take your phone, you can take your phone and you can take it and you can scan the QR code there. You scan that QR code and it'll take you into it. Sometimes it gets a little tricky and it, and it, and it kicks you out, but that's okay. And so when you, some of the rules of engagement here, when you go and you scan that on there, or you go to kahoot.it, or you can download the Kahoot app. All right, you're gonna put in this game pin uh, of, of your favorite biblical characters on there, unless you wanna just go with your straight name. Uh, we like to put our biblical characters there, but again, I just want to remind everybody this is a learning environment, and so as long as we learn something, we're doing all right here. We're doing all right, and so if that's all right, then we're going to be all right, all right. And so, uh, what you'll see up here is Kahoot as we're, as we're letting folks get in just a little bit more, get in a little bit more. Um, you go ahead, you log on in, and as the names populate. Then we'll go and start and let this thing and let this thing go and percolate. So, um, all right, we got Deborah on the board, and so again, this is just the same Bible study, just depicted in a different way. Now, I got a family full of educators. I kind of moonlight as a higher education instructor, former chair, and stuff like that, and then obviously Bible study. And so, what we know is just that if you get the same thing over and over and over again. Um, learning might not always be facilitated for everybody. So what we have here is a little bit of trivia. Took this from K-12 um, uh, instructional method and design, and they seem to have a great time. So I think we have a great time. And I just asked it if if you want to participate, come on in into Kahoot. If you don't want to participate or have some issues getting into Kahoot, you can go up onto Facebook, you can go up onto YouTube, and you can you can share your answers there. Uh, and we'll try to get them captured there. But remember, everybody's a winner as long as we're able to learn a little something about uh, uh, we have Miss, we have Miss slash Sister Kaylin uh, coming up there. Uh, so we got two folks coming in. But go ahead and, and share it with folks. Uh, 
again, this is just a, a great way in which we can love on the Lord, learn about the Lord. Uh, this this idea for this particular round of of, of uh, biblical trivia comes from Sister Michelle, who unfortunately probably will not be able to participate tonight. She's got another engagement. But she's talked about as we were delving into the disciples slash apostles, right? What are the disciples? Who are disciples? What did they do? Why were they sent out? And so forth. If we could do, um, if, if we could do maybe a Bible trivia on the disciples. So you asked for it. We got it. And, uh, and, and those type of things, those kind of ideas, send them on in. Send them on in. And we will absolutely go and, and uh, see if we can get it in a realm of doable. We seem to be losing some players here. Are we okay? What was, what was, what's happening? I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> so as we talked about, sometimes the, the players, sometimes they, they kind of fall off, go away. Uh, but that's all right. We're going we're gonna to make it work. We're going to get it and get it uh and get them back in here so this is a good time to pray <laughs> pray pray that the people get back in there okay sister kayla you're back on the board uh hopefully we get deborah back into there and then if again if you want to join in even if it's mid-stride you can go and scan the qr code there or you can go to kahoot um dot it and then put in that code there you can you can love on the lord by putting on your favorite biblical character or you can put your straight name and uh, and your, 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 your given name. All right. And so uh, just some rules of engagement as well in the chat. We just want to make sure that we always treat each other with dignity and respect. And uh, we'll go forth from there. Is that all right? All right. We'll go into some prayer and then we will get this thing started. It's, it's, not, um, it's not cheating if you invite a friend. All right. Family members, co-workers or anything like that. Let them come in. And even if they don't want to participate, that's okay. As long as they're learning something about the Lord, maybe can take it someplace with them. I think it's a great idea. All right. So Heavenly Father, we glorify your name today. And Father God, we thank you now for the gift that is this day, this hour, this very moment. And Father God, any opportunity that we have to be on this side of the earth, we give you glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise because you alone are worthy of it, Father God. Thank you for putting breath into our lungs and blood through our veins, Father God. Allowing us, Father God, synapses in the brains to fire that. It, it, the hearts beating, Father God, and allowing us to be here. Father, you are awesome and mighty in all your ways. And we thank you now in the name of Jesus for you are great and awesome in all your ways. And so, Father God, we ask you and we thank you now for the forgiveness of our sins. And we pray now, Father God, that as your word says, to study and show thyself approved, workmen need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of God, Father God. So let us use your word for your glory, Father God, that we might equip the power and the courage and the very people that have set forth this day, this hour, this very moment, to say and to proclaim that you are their God, Father God. You are God, we are people. And so, Father God, we just ask that something's heard, something is seen, that would not only enhance, but equip, empower, and encourage our walk tonight, yeah. the believer, but for the unbeliever, allow them to make an important decision that you are who you say you are, that you'll do do what you say you do, and you'll do it for them, Father God. And thank you for the forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future. And Father God, speak to the hearts of the unbeliever today. And through this exciting medium, Father God, for what men uh, and the devil meant for evil, Father God, you meant for good. So we are taking back the social media airways and, and learning for your good. And so, Father God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, amen. Amen. Okay, we seem to have lost some folk in the prayer. All right, back again, maybe having some connectivity issues. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start. All right, if that's all right with you guys, again, look at the big screen. It's pretty, pretty, pretty neat. There. You can actually see it as opposed to uh, some of the little things. All right, we're going to start here. We're going to start, and we're on our way. Let the Spirit Ministries Bible Trivia. Three, two, one. All right, here we go. All right, according to John 12 and 6, which disciple was responsible for overseeing the money in Jesus' ministry? All right. There it is. <laughs> and so you got red, Luke, blue, Matthew, amber, John, and in green, Judas. All right. So we have one correct answer. All right. Judas Iscariot. All right. And so what you'll see here is that, uh, yes. So I got a little bit of tidbits here. You know, I, I like to pontificate. But, but Judas is the correct answer. Um, 
<laughs> it appears he wasn't uh, 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 he wasn't as good at his job as his son would say. So I'm I'm reading here some some notes here, but uh, I often talk about that many people were afraid of Matthew because Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collectors were very unscrupulous people. They were known to have cheated in folks a time or two, and so a lot of times. Uh, people would look at Jesus like, hey, you got this tax collector, right? What are you doing? Why, why, why are you associating with this? Because the, the, the religious folk at the time, I'm like, no, uh, we're, we're caught up in their own self-righteousness, their own piety. But in a certain amount, Jesus tells, uh, tells the people at large, right, uh, the Jews, and in particular his disciples, he, 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 he tells them that some piety, some righteousness it's just not going to get it. He, they got to take on his righteousness because the righteousness that is, has been perverted by their perversion of the law, right? Um, it's just, it, they're good enough. It's just not going to be good enough. Can we say that there? And so what, what I have written down here is this talks about according, um, according to scripture, he often, uh, he often pocketed money, Judas did, right? <laughs> I mean, think about that for a second. We don't, we don't want Matthew. He's a tax collector. He's unscrupulous, right? So we still have some trust issues, even though Jesus talks about love and money and so forth. We got trust issues. But Judas had a pocket of money for himself, and that's according to John 12 and 6, in which we were talking about, that same reference there. In the NIV, NIV version, right, the new, uh, the new international version states that as keeper of the money back, he, he being Judas, used to help himself to what was put into it, right? Judas, he had sticky fingers, if you want to talk about some, some, some language of previous times, right? He had sticky fingers. So, um, so it wasn't Luke, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't Matthew, uh, all folks that could be, be trusted, it wasn't John, but it was Judas, right? So they, they, were, um, they were afraid of Matthew's history. Now, if we were to go into a deep diatribe, you, you could talk about who you were as opposed to who you are, who you were in the world, Right. And, and which do they see? Right. People will initially remember, oh, that was the drug user. That was the drunkard. That was the abuser. That was the womanizer. That was the adulteress. That was the liar. That was the cursor. That was that was the suicide. That was all these things. But then who does Christ say you are? And depending upon their walk in life, uh, depends upon you know, how they see that. And so Paul talks about that a lot in his writings about putting off the old and putting on the new because Jesus, through the shedding of the blood, has set us free. So it's just it's just interesting, just something as simple as that, John 12 and 6, in terms of overseeing the money and what people saw, right? What Jesus saw in terms of Matthew, a.k.a. a tax collector, and what Matthew would, would become, right? That transformation. He was called, he was drawn, he was transformed. And Judas, in spite of Christ knowing who Judas would become, uh, chose him anyways, right? That scriptures might be fulfilled, that prophecies might be fulfilled. And if you want to check that out, actual reference, you can, can check out John 6. It's a little bit longer chapter, right? But it's it's very, very, very powerful. We'll get we'll get a little bit more into, in, into that a little bit later. But there you have it. All right, Deborah, up on the board. All right. Remember, you can at any time log in to kahoot.it. All right, and you can put in that pin code and join us. Now, if you want to put it into the chat, just just let us know. Uh, we'll have somebody check the chat periodically on on Facebook, YouTube, and so forth. All right, but we're so, so glad that you're here. Thank you for attending. All right, next question. Next question. All right, after Judas betrayed Jesus, he killed himself. How many men were considered for replacing him as one of the twelve? All right, so in the red, we have the number two. In the blue, we have the number one. In amber, we have three, and in green, zero. So red, two, blue, one, amber, three, and then green, zero. So how many were considered to replace Judas? How many? So there was 12. One betrayed, as Jesus, as Jesus mentioned, all right? One betrayed, and so now they had a deficit. So how many did the remaining disciples turn apostles decide on, right? How many, or they didn't decide, how many were they choosing from, I should say, right? And so we have one correct answer, um, 
in terms of two, right? And that is correct. And so when you look at that, all right, the remaining disciples decided that a man, um, that the man to replace Judas needed to have, a, have been following Jesus since the time he was baptized, all right? So they put some qualifications on this, right? So he needed to be uh, following Jesus since he was baptized. So that was the first qualification. They nominated two men. They nominated Joseph and Matthias, right? I mean, obviously, Matthias ultimately winning out. Um, then they, they prayed. There's so much in there as well. So they, they knew they had a deficit. There's 12, one betrayed, killed himself. And so now they, they've got two men. They've got Joseph, they got Matthias, and they chose him. And so they chose him in the natural, but yet they prayed upon it. They prayed upon it, right? They prayed and asked God to show which one he wanted to replace Judas. And so we learn a lot from that, right? Is that all the oopsie happens, right? God's still in control. And though we think a thing, it might not necessarily be so. So asking and praying for wisdom and discernment there um, is, is what they did there. And so they, they, they went before God. They prayed and asked God to show him which, which one, to show which one he wanted to replace Judas with in the cast lots. And Matthias was chosen as Judas's replacement. Um, and that's found in Acts, the first chapter, right? First chapter, verses 21 through 26. And 21 through 26. And so it's pretty, pretty, pretty impressive there. So it's not like they just haphazardly um, chose and went there. They, they, they took a look and determined some qualifications, and then they began to pray upon it, and then they went for it from there. And, and I will tell you that just from a pastoral standpoint, um, very big in terms of putting on a prayer uh, and praying to our God based upon this impending decisions. So whether it be auxiliary positions or this or that, or even things that as a pastor would go and tackle on to. And there's safety in a multitude of councils. So God and fearing men and women may be able to come together and to pray over some things. And don't be afraid. So those that are affiliated with Living Spirit Ministries, they know that when I come with, this, with some requests, um, the, the first thing I'm going to say is let's pray upon it. Okay, let's pray upon it. And, and, and God doesn't necessarily have to take all day to go and answer a prayer. I mean, Pastor Davis from uh, Embrace Hope International, we talk about that all the time. But if he does delay, that doesn't mean it's necessarily denied. Right? It doesn't necessarily mean it's denied. And so we trust the Lord with all our heart, according to Proverbs 3, right? And we not our own understanding. But just to, just the same, Isaiah 55 tells us that his thoughts are not our thoughts, nor his ways are our ways. So far as the heavens are from the earth, so are his thoughts and his ways. And so, but it's his word that shall not go up what. So what are we standing on? And so that's just a little bit of nugget there that I that, that I take from um, the the authenticity of the call. And, and the individual being drawn, and then in particular, um, being transformed. So prayer, prayer changes some things there. And especially when you've been called by God to do some things, and there's a, there, there's a change there, you want to make sure that you're heading in the direction of God. All right, next question on the board. Next question. This apostle was the first to join Jesus's cause and even introduced his brother into Christ. Is it red, Thomas? Is it blue, John? Is it amber, Andrew? Is it green, Simon? Red, Thomas, blue, John, amber, Andrew, or green, Simon? Which is it? All right, all right. You got a couple more seconds there. Do, 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 do. All right, the correct answer is Andrew. And we talked about this over the last three weeks, right? Last two and a half, three weeks. But Andrew, Andrew, the apostle, this one, right? Disciple turned apostle. And remember, Andrew was one of John the Baptist's uh, disciples, right? And so, but he was also whose brother, right? Little tidbit there. Anybody? Anybody? Whose brother? Tom, no, not Thomas. Hmm. He renamed this particular, he being Jesus, renamed this particular individual. His original name was Simon. Oh. 
and called them Cephas, meaning stone or rock, in, in Aramaic. And then in the Greek, it's Petros. Still not ringing a bell. Peter, Simon Peter, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, right? Hmm. So as is the custom, Deborah traditionally splits herself uh, it kicked me out. While, while in process. Now, there's been much debate among some that if they restart with the same name, but a numeral after it or a letter, then those points may or may not be accumulated, might not be accumulated, um, although the jury is still out on that. And so... Um, so, so we'll see. And so maybe sister Kaylin, as she, she gets on the board, we'll, we'll be able to adjudicate on that. All right. And again, it, and you can put in that pin number at the bottom there. You can choose your favorite Bible character and, uh, and we'll go from there. Again, we're all winners here as long as we're learning on the Lord and we're able to take something just, even if it's just one thing, little tidbits, little nuggets. Uh, as we go through the trivia questions there. All right. Well, we thank you for attending tonight, and thank you for participating. All right. Three of the four New Testament Gospels list the disciples by name. Which Gospel does not name all 12 of them? Red, the Gospel of John. Blue, the Gospel of Luke. Amber, the Gospel of Matthew. Green, the Gospel of Mark. All right. Ooh, wow, that went by kind of quick. Okay, now we talked this a couple of weeks ago um, when the question was made about a man named Nathaniel and was he also known as Bartholomew? And I went and probably gave a little bit more geek knowledge than y'all ever cared to know. And we talked about the meanings of some names and how the Synoptic Gospels all have the listing of it, but then John did not have some that did not have even Acts has a listing. Um, disciples turn apostles, right? And so the Gospel of John is the one one off that does not have the complete listing of it, right? And we'll get a little bit further into some of those things in terms of the Gospel of John um, as we go a little bit forth there. But yeah, the Gospel of John is the only one of the of the the four Gospels that does not give that complete listing, right? Mm -hmm. And Pastor, there is, uh, I think there might be some issues on the thing. Some are saying that by the time they answer, it's gone off. So I don't know if it's the timing or. Mm, the timing. Mm -hmm. There's a delay. Delay yeah. from when it, it comes up to when. They get it through Facebook, I think, yeah. Uh, on Facebook or are folks just as they log in onto the Kahoot? <laughs> I read the login. They're trying to get in as Caitlin, too. Let's just let's play and see where it goes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, all right. So, we're saying there's some activities there that are, uh, are not necessarily straightforward. Is that what we're saying? Uh, okay. All right. Let's, let's, let's do our best to, uh, to get after this. All right, so let's see here. I'm checking in so many comments here. I got, uh, oh, okay, I see. So Sister Kayla was trying to go through the, the comments there. I see Pastor March on there. Get in there, Pastor March, get some of them questions. Pastor Aaron, get some of those questions. All right, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna switch back over to here. Da, 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 da. All right, all right, all right. Um, now that we have all reset. Okay, which apostle had a friend who when first told about Jesus replied, can there, can there, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Bad English there. Red is Matthew, blue is Philip, amber, is Peter and green is Judas Iscariot. Red Matthew, blue Philip, uh, 
yellow, amber, Peter, green, Judas. Okay. We've got one responded. Okay. And just as an aside, I normally say this, but I'm really not that smart. Sometimes an apple really is just an apple. On the previous question, if you could see the picture, it had the Gospel of John, and that was that was kind of a clue as to what the answer was. Um, this one, I don't know if I gave as clear an answer on there, but we have talked about this in terms of uh, can any good come out of Nazareth? And we talked about Nazareth, where Nazareth was, and yeah, the picture on that one didn't didn't really uh, probably help as much. But yes, right, it's just which apostle had a friend who. When first told Jesus, uh, told about Jesus, reply, can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth, right? And we 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 delved, we, we delved into why that was, right? And some would say, some theologians said that it was because of Bethlehem and in, in, in scriptures and the prophecies and talked about Bethlehem. And that's true, he was born out of Bethlehem, but he was raised in Nazareth, right? And some said that they were somewhat elitist and saying they weren't, but there's not as much proof about that. But we talked about the goodness that did come out of Nazareth and it was some historical reference of Nazareth and so forth. Uh, yeah, Philip, Philip had some issues um, in terms of that going forward. But, um, or, well, he had the, um, the friend. Philip had the friend. But Nathaniel was the one um, that would go and say, can there be anything good that comes out of Nazareth, right? But when Jesus would give... The revelation that he saw him up underneath the fig tree, Daniel would go and follow up with Philip. And Philip came giddily and talked about this is the Christ and so forth. And Philip replied, uh, Nathaniel replied, uh, can any good come out of Nazareth? All right. All right. So Deborah 2, Caitlin 2. They are uh, they're closing in on the now dormant Deborah one. <laughs> all right, all right. This is like a horse race. They're coming around. Some might have gotten out the block a little slower, but they're coming around the corner, right? Um, and they're and they're making they're making their laps. It's not too late to get in on this because you can give it a little bit, and there might be a Deborah three on here. You too could probably catch up. So um, if you want to join in, Kahoot.it. Um, there's the there's the pin on there uh, should be clearly displayed up there and then oh by the way you can also put it into the chat if you're, if you're looking into it's the already chat. in the chat okay okay yeah there's always going to be a much greater delay if you're in the chat okay um, I, I, that one I can't I can't help as much but I'm just just glad that y'all are able to participate all right here we go another question here this apostle was a fisherman. He may be most familiar to many for his denial of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. All right. Ray Ray is red. Big Earl is blue. Thomas is amber. Or Peter is green. Ray Ray, red. Big Earl, blue. Amber is Thomas. And Peter is green. Now, before we get into this, right? I, Ray Ray and Big Earl. Right, 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 right. I just... I just want y'all, again, to clue in. So like Ray Ray, the R's red, you, you, you clue in on the red there. Come on, man. That's big Earl old B for blue, right? Now Thomas, eh, well, that just didn't. All right. But Peter, like Peter Pan, green? Okay. No? no? Okay. Okay. So, but Peter, Peter did. Now, what's what's interesting about this is, is that prior to them going into there, into the garden, Peter vehemently denied that he would ever leave the side of Jesus Christ, right? Yeah, matter of fact, twice he did that, uh, two separate occasions. But Jesus told him that he would deny him three times, right? And so when you, you understand that context, and they're in the garden of Gethsemane, and he, he says you could not stay awake for an hour, right? He specifically targeted Peter because he's he, the whole of the disciples, minus obviously Judas at this point, he, he told them to stay awake and to be vigilant, right? Um, and what he was intending for them to see was his steadfast 
loyal devotion to his heavenly father, to God, in the midst of trials and tribulations. Because soon he would be gone and they too would be tempted. They would go through the trials and tribulations. But in particular, he scorned Peter, right? Because he's saying that, hey, even in the midst of this trial to stay awake, you couldn't stay awake just for a little bit. And three times, all right, he, went, he being Jesus, went before the Lord. But he, he went back and he, he rebuked them for, for staying awake. And then he was ultimately betrayed there, right? And denied him. Hmm. Deborah, two, making, making moves. Kaylin, too, making moves. Again, if you're just joining in, welcome. Thank you for attending. Slow and Spirit Ministries, we're doing Bible trivia. It's our regular Bible study night, just with a different twist. If you'd like to join us in Kahoot, if you never tried it, come on board. You can take on your favorite biblical character, or you can come in with your given name. Uh, Kahoot.it, that's displayed at the bottom there, and the pin code. Join on in, or you can drop your notes into the comment section. All right. Out of the 12 disciples, which one was the first to declare Jesus as the Son of God, according to John chapter 1 and 49? Is it red, Peter? Is it blue, Nathaniel? Is it uh, gold, John? Or is it green, Andrew? Red, Peter? Blue, Nathaniel? Amber, John? Or green, Andrew? And just as an aside, for those... Oh. Those the uh, the reason why it might close up real quickly is if there's only two if there are only two participants on the live version of, you know on Kahoot once both of them have answered then the session will will close it's set to twenty seconds and so if they don't answer within those twenty seconds then it'll go to full gambit so I, I should have probably given that this disclaimer all right so the two responses were Peter right that's a good response it's just not the correct response. And so Nathaniel is that, and that goes back to what I talked about. Again, a lot of times I will say things and throw things out there. So when Philip ran to Nathaniel and said, hey, we have found him. He is here. Come follow him. This is, this is the crime. I'm paraphrasing. This is the one that we've heard of, the Christ. This is the one that's been proclaimed, the Christ, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. He's like, oh, can any good come out of Nazareth, right? And so Jesus responds to him and he talks about seeing him up underneath the figure of Nathaniel, you know, calls him by name and, and talks about him being up in the fig tree. And so he begins to take a look at Christ, not just physically in the natural, but spiritually. And then he tells him that, oh, you, you worship, you believe because I said you were up in the fig tree, but you'll see me. In, in the splendor of heaven, you know, and, and, and see these things. And so Nathaniel was the first to declare Jesus as the son of God. So Peter's a good answer. It's just it comes after Nathaniel makes this declaration based upon what Jesus spoke about. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. So after Nathaniel declares it, that's when Peter declares that you are the son of the living God. No, it's, it's so, further. Yeah. It's okay. further along that. That's when, when Peter declares it, it's when Jesus is asking who, quote unquote, do they say that I am? Who do people say that I am? Some say, you know, Elijah, some say, you know, John, blah, 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 blah. Well, who do you say that I am? Right. And then Peter says, thou art the Christ, you know, and, and so forth. And so he tells him that flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but the spirit. And so, yes, it's a little bit further along. And what's what's interesting about this is, is that when I talk about the call, the draw, and the transformation, uh, the, each of the Gospels reveals Christ um, through a different different lens. Some will do it in terms of maybe the, the signs, wonders, and miracles. Some will take a look at more of the history and so forth. But what you see is the calling of the disciples soon to be turned apostles you'll see them being drawn drawn away from things of this world even though they stumble and bumble oh ye of little faith be it the, the rocking of the boat and you know peter walking onto the water these, these trials and tribulations and then ultimately the transformation that occurs upon his death and resurrection in the book of acts so really when you when you take the four of the gospels and you see the advent of christ 
right? And the advent of his ministry, and you see him walking, uh, walking from here to there, not like necessarily literally, but but going from the beginning to the end of that, to where he's crucified and buried, and then he's he's risen and to the onset of the of the church. You see Acts one, and going into Acts two is pretty powerful if you if you take those the the transformation that comes by your belief in Christ, right? But the, the ultimate transformation of when the indwelling spirit comes, not only is the indwelling spirit, but on that day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And, and those signs, wonders, and miracles that he proclaims, uh, in, in particular, Luke 9, 1 and 2, in particular, at the end of, of Mark and Matthew, right, when he commissions them, it, it's, I mean, it's powerful. It's powerful if you take that in totality of what Jesus, what was, what was pitched in the Old Testament in terms of prophecies, um, the word incarnate in terms of Christ walking, and then folks um, either rejecting him or acknowledging him based upon what is seen, what is unseen, their belief, their faith, and ultimately that transformation that goes along into Acts. But what you have here in John, that first chapter, remember, we, we, we took the time at the beginning of the year, all the way up to this point, that just one chapter in the book of John, and talking about the significance of the word, the word of God. And I made the, 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 the supposition that regardless, now this is a dispensational approach and free grace theology, so, so some might, might disagree based upon a theological orientation, but salvation aka deliverance which comes from that greek word soso right to deliver or, or soteria the, being the the the, the, the uh, salvation um to say being soso or or soteria being deliverance coming from soteriology the doctrine of salvation has always been from belief in god's word you can look as those revelations were were steadily revealed over over periods of time right and so here it is, the word of God, as we talked about, see how uh, the apostle John writes in this gospel, starting off in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, the word was God, and so forth. And then it tells the relationship. It's just nothing was made that was not made through him. And so we're, we're again, we're, we're, we're focused on Jesus. And so he, he goes on a little further of the one who will bear witness of it. And from there, the disciple, the opening disciples, and from that one, there would be the voice calling out in the wilderness, the herald, and then would go in the follow. He says, I'm not that guy, right? I mean, there's this guy. He is the Messiah. Boom. And then the revelation comes from the word, right? That revelation comes from not just any word, because there's lots of words out there. There's false words out there. But the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And Nathaniel caught that revelation and saw it there because of what Jesus spoke. And it's just, it's powerful. So yeah, I didn't mean to get on that diatribe, but yes, Nathaniel was technically that first one. Now, I wrote notes down here so that I wouldn't get on these long diatribes. I'm sorry. Let me get back to the script. And so what, <laughs> what, what it says is uh, what, 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 it, what, it, what it was supposed to say here. Um, oh, goodness. Um, yeah. John John one forty John one and forty six is where you will find uh, this information. Philip had reported to Nathaniel the good he knew about Jesus and Nazareth. Philip became one of the twelve times Jesus chose. Right? Oh, well, that, that's the wrong one now. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, must have not put. Must have skipped that one. So my diatribe was 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 well uh, well taken there. Um, all right. So, diatribe was 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 well um, well vested there. So, because the notes didn't go into as long as an explanation there. All right. What do we got here for the scoreboard? Leaderboard did not change. All right. All right. Again, you can join in at Kahoot.it. The pin code is listed below. We'd love to have you. All right, next question. This apostle was a fisherman and one of the first to follow Christ. He was the brother of John, the apostle. Da, 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 da. Is it Philip in red, James the greater in blue, Andrew in amber, 
or Jude in green, Philip red, James the greater in blue, Andrew in amber, Jude in green. We had, we had one for Philip. The correct answer is James. is James the greater, right? James the greater. All right. And just just before we go back there, because I'm 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 silly like this and I didn't I didn't see the appropriate thing. Just to go back to the previous question there. When we talked about out of the 12, um, yeah. And Nathaniel is telling Jesus, Rabbi, you're the son of God. You are the king of Israel. The declaration is made months, perhaps years, right? Before Peter made his declaration in Matthew 16 and 16, and that Christ is the son of the living God. Similar declarations by Peter are also recorded in Mark 8, 20, 8 and 29 and Luke 9 and 20. So there's more of the scriptural references uh, to the diatribe that I gave there, right? Um, what else? Okay, so to this particular question, which we, we said Philip, all right, um, the apostle was the, fi uh, was the fisherman, um, first one of the first to follow Christ, but he was the brother of John the apostle, right? Um, John the apostle. Well, well, it's James the Greater, who is the son of, of Zebedee from Galilee. So there was a good number of them that were from Galilee. All right, we talked about 11 out of 12. We talked last week, 11 out of 12 were from Galilee. Or maybe it was two weeks ago. But 11 out of 12 were from Galilee. But the 12th uh, was who? It was not from there. It was Judas. Judas was the one that was not. Yeah, yeah. We, had, we, we threw it out there as a, as a, as a trip. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was very interesting. Very interesting. But I chose him to take him on. Right. We didn't trust Jesus. He was from, he was from Nazareth. Well, that, there's, there's lessons in that as well. Deep lessons in that as well. All right. All right. So James the Greater. All right. Leaderboard unchanged. Uh, we, we Again, it's not too late to get up in here. We're all winners as long as we learn something. We can pass it on. All right. What do we got? Which disciple led a little boy to Jesus to feed 5,000 with five fish and two loaves of bread? According to John 6, 5 through 9, right? See the fish, see the loaves, probably not correct numbers. But red is Matthew. Blue is Philip. Amber is Andrew. Green is Peter. Red is Matthew. Blue is Philip. Amber is Andrew. And green is Peter. All right. All right. So we have one Andrew. correct answer. Yes, yes. Andrew is the correct. Andrew. All right. So take a look at the symbology there um, of, of Andrew helping to lead folks. And then he was, he was yeah, the, this disciple led a little boy to Jesus so that he could feed those 5,000. So when I tell you that John 6 is filled with a whole bunch of nuggets, I mean, it is great. He tells them, you feed them. Yeah. Right. He tells them you feed them. And, and, and Jesus was always not just uh, teaching for the immediacy of now, but he was preparing them for when he would go so that they could prepare others to continue on. And this is it's just pretty powerful. The book of John, period. And we're just blessed to be able to, to have that uh, this year in particular, because we're talking about guided by the light, which comes through the latter parts of John three. And then the ellipsis dot, 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 maintain a vision, which comes from the back two. Um, but the book of John is, is so very powerful. And in particular, when you, when you take John chapter one, you talk about the word and its significance and how the word um, was, was, was and it is and it will be. And you see those three all coming into play in the John chapter one there, what was, right? And if you put that in context of 400 plus, approximately 430 years between the end of Malachi until this part, right? Until the, to the word of God comes to the people of God. Pretty powerful there. And so there's some, some conditioning drills that got to go on there. You talk in John 3, where, where Jesus is giving the road to redemption, the path to salvation to Nicodemus, who's a Pharisee, right? He's talking about the whole being born again. And this, this is a very difficult concept for this ardent follower of the law to be able to see, right? And uh, just very powerful there. 
And then you, you go over to John chapter 6, where he physically feeds them and he spiritually feeds them. But the bone of contention, no pun intended with the fish, right? The bone of contention there is to be born again. Right. And what do you mean to be born again? And he tells them and he starts off with the feeding. He just talks about the natural feeding that they just received. He talks about the manna. Right. That, 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 that Moses received manna from heaven and, and fed the people. But I've, I've maintained this throughout the years here that that as God was trying to draw his people, he called them out. Right. They called on to him. They called them out of bondage. And as he was establishing his relationship with them, the physical, natural feeding and satiating them was just a side product of it. What he was trying to show them is, is the, the everlasting deliverance, right? So when we talk about the feeding, it's the deliverance. It's, it's being able to take care of not only your basic needs, but your eternal needs. So if the God of deliverance can deliver them from the physical, mental oppression and bondage there, then surely he can do these things. And so when he frees us eternally, right, when he frees us eternally of sin, you know, we were castigated into an eternal death, an eternal separation. But yet the shed blood of Christ allows us to be healed and delivered eternally. And so if he's going to do that, how much more will he not give us all things, right? According to Romans 8, he says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for, him, for us all, right? Uh, uh, how much more will he not give us all things? And so when you look here at John 6 and the physical feeding, and he tells him about how, you know, in the past you, you got this manna, right? But now you must take this bread of life. He, he's talking about this bread of life and consume it. And he's telling them that, that to take in these things to be nourished in the righteousness of Christ and to be born again, because doing these things in a natural and all these ways here is not going to lead you to anywhere up until, except for opposite of God. So it's very, very powerful. And then as you go down a little bit further, the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing, right? And so at that point, they're like, no mas, no more. Um, and and they went away. And so from the multitudes, and this is one of the things we talked about the, the previous weeks, Jesus after he was baptized and after he went into the wilderness, right, people began to draw on to him, right? As the calling had gone out, people were beginning to draw on to him. So he had a multitude of disciples. But at this point, there was there was a turning of ways. And so out of that came 12. And so you'll affectionately hear me talk about this, that Jesus' ministry started with the multitudes. He ended up with 12, and out of those 12, one would betray him, one would deny him, and the rest scattered. And so this lets you know that, that, that God calls, he draws, he transforms, but not anyone standing next to you is standing with you, right? And so, but, but yet he did this anyways, even knowing it. And so you got to adhere to the call um, that those would be drawn on to at least hear the word. And then from there, um, in, the Apostle John proclaims that Jesus knew that one would betray him, right? He, he knew in front of it, but he called them in spite, right? And he knew Peter would deny him, but he called them in spite. I, I, that's, just, that's just very powerful there. A, a powerful rebuke uh, to those that say, well, God can't use me because I've done such and such and such and such and such. Just powerful. Sorry, I was supposed to stick to the script. Let me get back to these notes. Uh, yeah, see anything that I didn't uh, put on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Andrew is the correct answer. Scripture reports there are five thousand men fed, but here's here, here's where numbers can be misleading, right? So you take the we we, we come from a literal grammatical historical um, uh, hermeneutic. So that means we take a look at the, the the context from from that place, and so in those those times they were very patriarchal. Right. And so meaning that they focused on the men folk. So they didn't take into account some of the other things. So some of the notes I have here is, but it was the custom of the day to not include women and children in such a report. So, so think about this for a second. As a result, the elders estimate 15,000 people. Think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. You feed them. Right. So we have an account that says 5,000 and it talks about the men. So it's not an, an accurate report, but it doesn't take into account the totality of all that were there. It's the same thing when we talk about. Um, the, 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 the military age males 
as we talk about Israel and then the order of march and them going out. And so the conservative estimates are one thing, but when we look at it, it's well over 1.2 million um, that, that, that were led out of Egypt, right? Because it only talks about the, the military age, man. And, and the book of Numbers addresses some of that as well. But theologians estimate here in terms of the, the, the amount of people that Jesus fed, 15,000, it's an estimate of 15,000 people were fed, right? They were fed um, with, tiny, with, a, with a tiny bit of food from the little boy who was led to Christ by Andrew. In other words, Andrew, right? It just, it's just amazing how these things work. Andrew played an important role in the Bible story, which is a favorite of millions of people today. Uh, and it, so think about that for a second. The little boy uh, only had just this minuscule seeming of a man and was able to go before Jesus. Let him to Jesus. Jesus blessed it, right? And Jesus' increase is greater than anything in, in, our, in our lives. And so uh, that's pretty powerful, man, pretty powerful. I'm running my mouth here. We don't, we don't have a whole lot of time left. We've got Kalen.2, right? Or 2.0 is in the lead here. Deborah 2.0 is uh, sliding behind here, sliding behind. So we're going to get into some thunder rounds here, thunder rounds. All right. This apostle is said to have evangelized as far as India when the early church was founded. Who is he? Is it Bartholomew? Is it John? Okay, Bartholomew is in the red. John is in the blue. James the Less. James the Greater, James the Less is in the amber, and Peter is in the green. Bartholomew red, John blue, James the Less, amber, and Peter green. Who is he? Is there a dispute here? No, I just got it wrong. Okay, okay. So the answer is. Yeah. <laughs> We have some, some conundrums here about going with the first choice, right? So Bartholomew, Bartholomew is the correct answer. And so um, Bartholomew is found to be Nathaniel. And so in a little quick tidbit that I had here, like I said, we discussed beforehand. Uh, um, uh, where are we? Yeah, that was... That was there. Uh, okay. Yeah, Bartholomew was probably Hebrew, and his real name may have been Nathaniel. And I thought we had a little bit more to do, so we covered that. Um, but yeah, so you'll see it listed as Bartholomew in some, Nathaniel in the others, and then as you go into the book of Acts. And so we talked about that the other week. Is it one, is it the other? And that's when we got to the discussion that the book of John did not have a complete list, right? Uh, as opposed to the Synoptic Gospels, each of those having you know, the fullness of the list there is just pretty interesting to be able to see that. All right. Leaderboard. Leaderboard. All right. All right, true or false. According to John's Gospel, Nathaniel, when first hearing of Jesus' claim, can there be any good that comes out of Nazareth? Is that true or that false? Blue, true, red, false. Now, again, not that smart. All right. We've said this no less than three times. And we already had two questions that revolved around this. So, what? Okay. So, we got one true. <laughs> All right. That's true. Uh, we have one false. That's false. I'm a, huh? <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's not, not true. It's true. What happened? Just a slip of the... No, I'm good. I said true. Okay, okay. So, yes. But Nathaniel exclaimed, can there be any good? I bad English there, I'm sorry. Uh, that, that, that comes out of Nazareth. Uh-oh. The leaderboard has t turned. We only got a few more minutes. All right, who was the disciples' treasure? Now, again, we've we've gone over this. Was it Matthew in the red? Was it Blue Peter? Is it Amber Thaddeus? My, my, my money is on Thaddeus. And Judas Iscariot on green. Did anyone notice the bird there? The bird. He's put it in the, the, the bird is tithing there. See, that's just pretty pretty awesome there. It's tithing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we have a box here, Living Spirit Ministry. So the birds. Okay. All right. So, so who was the disciples' treasurer? 
All right. So we have two correct answers there. Judas, we talked about that. They were so afraid of, of a tax collector, tax collector being Matthew, their mistrust for him, that I took Judas. And we talked about how Judas was often um, portrayed as pocketing money, right? So Judas, he was the treasurer. All right. Let's try to get a couple more in here before we go. All right, after Jesus' arrest, one apostle allegedly disowned him three times. Who was that apostle? Judas? Mayhem from Allstate? Jake from State Farm? Or Peter? Red is Judas. Blue is Mayhem from Allstate. Amber is Jake from State Farm. And green is Peter. All right, so we got two correct answers is Peter. And Jesus actually spoke that. He prophesied that over Peter. And Peter vehemently denied, but then yet, as they fast forward, they um, it, it came to pass. And, and again, another powerful testimony of the redemption of Christ. And then and Peter was remorseful. He repented, filled with the Holy Spirit. It was never the same after that, right? Um, you go to Acts 12, just a powerful, powerful. You, I, I love to talk transformation. You use Peter, you use Paul. Right, the transformation, and God reveals a lot in those things to us through them, right? And so Peter, the impetuous fisherman, Peter, the slicer and dicer in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter, the one that was asleep, uh, you know, woke in a different sense, and Peter, the denier, right? But then Peter, locked up in jail, simply rested in, in, in the grace of the Lord, in the church pray. The power of prayer on display uh, when they didn't even know, they didn't fret, they didn't panic, they prayed. And Peter rested on the power of his Lord Jesus Christ. Boom, was released and, and went on and he kept, he kept pressing. Right? Pretty powerful there. Pretty powerful. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Can we, can we get... Oh, Deborah. Deborah, too, is on fire. Okay. What's the fourth book of the New Testament? We've talked this at nauseum here too. Red, Luke, blue, Matthew, Amber, John, or green, Ruth. What's the fourth book of the New Testament? Luke being a red, Matthew, blue, Amber, John, or green, Ruth. Now, right off the bat, you can get rid of Ruth, right? It's in the Old Testament. It's not, it's not in the New Testament. Okay. Uh, so that leaves you down with three. So Luke, um, nope. Matthew, nope. And then John, what have we been focused on a lot? It's John. Matthew, okay. Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's how I was, was taught, um, and that's that's how we go. All right. All right. The leaderboard, Deborah, is still on fire, right? All right. One more. True or false? Bartimaeus was, a, was the blind person Jesus healed. Blue, true. Red, false. Blue, true, red, false. All right, we got two trues, two trues, yes. What would you have me do? I may see. Right? Yes, yes. And so he believed, again, this goes back to my supposition, my premise, and have another another premise that is that is made true there, right? That when I say that the deliverance through God's word, regardless of this dispensation, and Jesus spoke unto him, and he's you know, basically he believed in the word of God. Right, literally the word of God incarnate, but he couldn't see, so he couldn't see him. So he had to believe, he had to trust. He believed it, bam, he was able to see. Not only see naturally, but spiritually, the faith opened the aperture there. It's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Uh, all right, all right. And so here, you Okay. Because you're in the lead, you want to leave it. We're going to close out now, and we thank you now. Um, uh, Deborah, too, has a streak of five correct, and we're going to end there. She's on fire, um, and she ends up being our winner, okay, without adding on the previous ones there. And so we do, we do thank you. We, we do thank everybody for attending uh, today. Let me... Go back over here, and uh, I hope everyone had a good time, and I hope we learn in just a little bit more meaningful way 
uh, of how how we can make learning the Bible a little bit more meaningful, how we can learn from the Bible uh, in a greater context by just doing what it says, just learning from what it says. And so I really enjoy these 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 sessions, and I hope you do too. And take what you have, share with what you have, and it's all right to go in 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 to take it and spread it with other folks. Because I tell you, Romans 10 and 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so the more we can get this out there, the, the, the funner and the greater it is. All right, let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, we call to you tonight and we thank you now for your grace, your peace, and your mercy. Father, we thank you now for this technology being able to reach the masses and that we could go through and study and show thyself approved workmen need not be ashamed. And Father God, we thank you now for equipping the power and encouraging us by within through your word and allowing us, Father God, to be supercharged tonight in which your word and allow our walk to be enabled. Now, Father God, we, we pray that for the one that has, has, has turned from his or her wicked ways and turned back to you by within through believing in Christ crucified and the one that's still on the ropes, Father God, we thank you now for that word penetrating. Every time that your word goes forth, the seed is being planted. So we glory in you and you alone. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. Hey, weekend, we thank you for attending. The Lord says the same. We would love to see you Sunday here at 951 South McPherson Church Road, Suite 102, Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, 28303. You can check us out at livingspiritministries.com and, and see the live stream there. Go to Fayetteville. Uh, you can go to Facebook, check out the live stream, or you can go to YouTube. So you got options there, uh, but we would love to see you in the house. If you come up on the live stream, let us know where you're coming from. Um, and if you have any prayer requests, let us know. Hey, go in peace, be blessed, and give some Jesus. Thank you again for attending.